Super Formula. The best open wheel single seater race series. We are racing. Action straight away. Oh no! And a massive off. That's a disaster. That was an incredible move. Another side by side action. This is the kind of race that we were looking for. That's a tire loose. Oh, a big smash! Oh, a big smash! And into the barrack! And the safety car is out. He goes to the outside. And he gets the job done. Hello and welcome to the final round of Super Formula 2021. We are at Suzuka, the home of Japanese motorsport. There's no better place to wrap up this year's championship and what a championship it has been. I'm joined in the commentary box, as always, by Martin Plowman. Listen, Plowy, what a year it's been. It's been absolutely spectacular, isn't it? It's absolutely flown by as well. And there is, there truly is no better place to bring this year's championship to an end. So so many fantastic stories and championships, be it from Formula One or Super Formula, have been wrapped up right here at Suzuka. Yeah, what an iconic circuit it is. It's the home of Japanese Grand Prix. So much history here, but you know, what a fantastic season that we've had. Yes, the championship may have already been wrapped up. Najuri, dominant winner this year, but there's still so much to play for with you know Rookie of the Year, and plus there's so much to fight for with drivers who are trying to save their seat for next year. Yep, yeah, absolutely. And of course, team standings, uh, which we'll get to in just a moment. And um, and as, as Paris said, Rookie of the Year and second place. There you go. That's how we got to this point. Uh, Tomoki Nojiri, absolutely dominant at the start of the year, winning in Fuji, Suzuka. Giuliano Lacey winning in Autopolis. Then it came to uh, Sportsland, Sugo, Nirai Fukutsumi. Then Tomoki Nojiri picked up where he left off, down to twin ring Matege. It was a double header. Hiroki Otsu was the man there who got the job done. And there's the team standings. Listen, it's it's all to play for, isn't it, Plowy? Just two points separating Team Impul and Team Mugen. We'll talk more about that later on. Dandelion and Nakajima rounding out the top four. So, as we said, it has been a spectacular year and a year really that has been dominated by Tomoki Najiri. Everything has just worked for him this year, hasn't it? Oh, it has, yeah. I mean, he's always been a bit of a nearly man, but him and the Team Mugen guys have gone away over the off-season and, and they've gelled, they've found the setup that works and they've come out of the gate so hot and, they, and they've just dominated the season. Yeah, it's been a spectacular uh, a spectacular year for him and it was actually celebrated today. Um, this is Tomoki Najiri just leaving the, uh, the pit lane. Um, on his out lap or his, his circulation formation lap to come round to the pits and um, it, it was um, a, a slow lap from him waving to the crowds everybody you know there to celebrate uh, his victory this year so all eyes were on him and um, you know it was made quite public this is what they were going to do he was going to get the circuit all to himself so this was this was Tomoki Najiri just earlier on making his way uh, round to uh, take up his his grid slot and um, there's an overview of his of his year so far. Stuck it on pole twice at round one and round five. Three race victories as well. And um, I think, Plowy, when you've had your worst result of the year, so far at least, we're not done, but his worst result of the year is a sixth. And that came at Sugo where there was that little lull. That's not been a bad year, has it? No, not at all. I mean, if you look back at the history of Najiri and, and how he's got to this point, this is his eighth season in Super Formula, starting out with Team Dandelion. Uh, Dokuma Racing in, uh, back in 2014 was a winner in his, in his debut season. And then after that, he just kind of went, went into a lull. Uh, not, not finishing all that great, finishing seventh in 2015, then ninth in 2016. And then his worst season to date was finishing 17th in the championship in 17. But then came the switch to, to Team Mugen. And after that, things just started to gel for him. You know, he was back on the winner's circle in 2019 at the uh, final race in Suzuka. And then 2020, uh, again, just gaining momentum, getting more consistent points, finishing finishing fifth in the points. And then this year, being the team leader, he's come out of the blocks. He's the one who's driving the setup changes, working with the engineers. And then come out of the blocks, really hard, winning in, in Fuji, starting on the front row in Suzuka. Very fortunate to get the win when Fukuzumi um, had the puncture. But after that, you know, 
the fifth place in Autopolis, sixth place in Sugo, and then the defining moment, that dominant victory at Montegi, which really put the nail in the coffin for the championship this year. I think it's worth pointing out as well, as you just have a look at uh, it, it kind of take his grid slot, waving to the crowd and uh, enjoying well-deserved applause. I think it's worth mentioning as well that it's not just, I mean, he's taken a, a very traditional route through motorsport, started out in karting, was successful in, in Formula A and everything else, and then came through the sort of single-seater series, but it's not just single-seater race cars that he's been so quick in, you know, GT500, Japanese GT500, you know, you can put him into a uh, into a GT car in the seat of anything and, um, you know, he's going to be able to drive it quickly. At 32, though, where does he go from here? Um, you know, there's no question that he's still got plenty of years left in him, but um, it's been a nice day and a nice way to start the day for Tomoki Nojiri. So there's confirmation of driver's standings. Tomoki Nojiri is your 2021 champion, but as we said at the top of the show, still so much more to play for, in particular Rookie of the Year and second position in this year's Super Formula Championship. So speaking of Rookie of the Year, there is, um, they're the people who've won it before. Oh, you see some big names on there. Kamui Kobayashi, Pierre Gasly, Alex Palau, uh, some... some uh, International drivers who've gone on to Formula One, IndyCar. Last year, it was Toshiki Oyu who got it done. And um, and this is the situation this year. And it's, as you said, it's all to play for. Senna Sakaguchi, just two points clear of Hiroki Otsu. Then we've got Rotomo Miata and Giuliano Alesi with an outside chance of, uh, of still wrapping up Rookie of the Year. Um, uh, he's starting uh, a little bit. He's starting 13th on the grid today, so he's got a real job on his hands at the moment. It's all uh, it's all to play for between Senna Sakaguchi and Hiroki Otsu. And this is how things line up today. Nobuharu Matsushita. What a qualifying lap from him yesterday. He's alongside Toshiki Oyu in the Nakajima car. Remember that. Then we've got Nirai Fukutsumi Tadasuke Makino. Then comes Tomoki Najiri alongside Rutomo Miyata in the first of the Tom's cars. Hiroki Otsu, the man who won at Mategi on grid seven with Sasha Fenestras in eighth. Ryo Hirakawa alongside Yuji Kunimoto in the KCMG car. Then comes Kenta Yamashita and Sena Sakaguchi. Giuliano Alesi coming off grid 13 with Yui Sekiguchi alongside him. He's got some work to do today if he's going to wrap up second in the championship. Naoki Yamamoto, 16th. Kazuta Kataka, Kazuyoshima and Tatiana Calderon rounding out the grids today. So there you go. That's how things stack up. It was nice to see Tomoki Najiri getting that lap and, uh, and getting the, the opportunity to take in some applause from, from the crowd. But I think just looking at that grid, we have got a real battle on our hands because there's a lot of drivers further back who've got some work to do today if they are going to get Rookie of the Year or Second in the Championship wrapped up. Yeah, I mean, I love, for large guys, there's, there's uh, not a lot to lose, so they're going to be going guns blazing, going for the the outright win today. Uh, we know we've, we've nothing to lose, so uh, it's going to make a really interesting race. Keep your eyes on Senna Sakaguchi and Yui Sakaguchi. At the moment, Yui Sakaguchi in second place in the championship, but he's starting from grid 14. He's got some work to do. On the other hand, Nobuharu Matsushita had a spectacular lap yesterday, and we will look at that in just a moment. For now, though, we can hear from him as he's chasing his first Super Formula victory. Congratulations for pole position, Nobuharu Matsushita. What? I couldn't understand anything. Congratulations to pole position. I guess you're glad that all the things you accumulated have, you could bring to a good result yesterday. Yes, of course. We had a lot of chances and good strategies until now, but now we could bring it into one shape and BMAX, the whole team, did so much for me and I want to do my best today. The start is really, really important today, I think. What do you think? Of course, yes, I want to stay in front, so I want to have a good start. And the sky cleared too. I was a little bit worried if it would rain, but now it seems okay. So I will leave my all on the track. Thank you. 
he seems remarkably calm, doesn't he? All things considered. And uh, he was talking about the rain. It was actually a wet free practice. Now, before we, we get into, into into some more interviews, it is worth mentioning that Naoki Yamamoto struggled manfully yesterday in, uh, in qualifying in the dry, was actually quickest in the wet. Things have dried out now. And for Nobuharu Matsushita, as he said, chasing his first victory in Super Formula and starting from pole, he'll be delighted to see that because Suzuka in the wet, um, you, you see, you've got to be committed. It's a quick circuit. That's a very fast circuit. It's very fast, very technical, really high G-force uh, corners. Um, yeah, you, you've got to have a, the car underneath you. You've got to have a very balanced car. And, and we'll see shortly, you know, Matsushita's lap was, was spectacular. Yeah, it was It was a fantastic qualifying lap. All to play for for him. In the meantime, we can hear now from Toshiki Oyu, Nirai Fukutsumi and uh, Tomoki Nojiri. Second grid, Oyu. In Q2, you're really fast. What do you feel about the main race? Yes, in the qualifying, in the end of Q3, I don't know the reason yet, but my pace dropped off a little bit. And in the main, for the main race, we did a lot of corrections and we want to finish with a good result. Good luck, thanks. Nirei Fukuzumi, this is the track where you got pole position once and third grid is not bad too, I think, and you're also fighting for the team championship. Yes, right. Last time in Suzuka, the second round in Suzuka last year. I was in a good shape, but I had a puncture, and this was really frustrating. So we want to have a revenge for that, and discussed a lot, did a lot of corrections, and we got it on third grid. So important for us is to have a good start, but yeah, that's uh, really difficult here. But I thought, yeah, we saw really uh, Fukuzumi in a good shape. Yeah, sure, I like this track, but of course there's still some possibilities for trouble here always, but I'll do my best for this last race. Good luck. Tomoki Nojiri comes here as a champion. Watching the qualifying, I thought it was really a racing, a driving, worthy of a champion. What do you think? Well, you said that quite positively. I think qualifying was quite difficult for me, maybe the most difficult qualifying for me this year. But we have some good strategies and we hope that they will work out. And of course, we'll just have to battle it out, and I want to show a good fight here. Team championship is also important for you, I guess. A message for the fans, please. Well, for the fans, I think it has been a difficult year. A lot of them couldn't come to the tracks, I think, but I want to show a good race which can also enjoy through television. And I hope a lot of people will watch. Thank you. So, great to hear from our drivers there. And um, I think Tomoki Najiri summed up uh, what's been a difficult 2021 for Super Formula. As we prepare for our formation app, I can tell you that it is raining ever so slightly at Suzuka. Slick tyres are still the tyre to be on. things up a little bit, isn't it's, it? It's going to get spicy, but there's no question um, at the moment. Slicks are still the tyre to be on, but that gets into your head. One minute left to run before we start the formation lap. But for Nobuharu Matsushita, he sat in that car now, looking down into Turn 1, and he can see just bits of rain on his visor, and that's the last thing you want to see. Now, the grid needs to be cleared uh, and he will get a penalty if he's got people still working on his cars. We did still see some mechanics working on Matsushita's cars. They've gone now, so we should be okay. There are your former winners from Suzuka round 
two in 2021 was Tomoki Nojiri. Nirai Fukutsumi was robbed. And um, can Tomoki Nojiri make it three here? He's got some work to do from fifth on the grid. In the meantime, great to see the fans back here at Super Formula. And uh, for the finale of what has been a spectacular year as we prepare to get the formation lap underway. So, Jenny, let me put you on the spot right now. Who is your call for the race win? Uh, look, I'd like to see Nobuharu Matsushita get the job done. It would be, um, you know, it'd be a great place to, uh, to, to to take his debut win. That being said, you know, Tomoki Najiri uh, has had a spectacular year, hasn't he? And um, there's no question that it's uh, it's well deserved to see him to see him take a, a, another victory here. Yeah, I think Matsushita, you know, we, we said in the pre-show yesterday in qualifying that he was due a win. He's been knocking on the door all season. You know, it's one car team, the BMAX team. Uh, but he's come in, he's done a fantastic job. He's, he's been getting quicker and quicker with every race, learning the car, learning the team, getting, this, getting the setup right. And uh, he's somebody that truly deserves to be in this series. Yeah, he's done a spectacular job, hasn't he? And as we said, uh, it was uh, such a clean qualifying lap from yesterday. Um, I myself were watching it earlier on, and it was so balanced. The car just looked so hooked up. There was absolutely no drama whatsoever inside the cockpit of the car. It was doing exactly what he wanted it to do. And um, this is all new to him in Super Formula, at least, leading the pack away on a formation lap. It's um, not new to him in his career, of course. He's been here plenty of times. But in Super Formula, this is uh, this is all new for him. And what he won't want to do on this formation lap is uh, is go tearing away from everybody else and then end up having to sit on the front row of the grid, losing all of the brake temperature and tyre temperature that he's built into the tyres on the formation lap. You can see air temp and track temperature 21 and 25 degrees. But there are spots of rain in the air. Now, there will be a big question about whether or not this BMX car will be fast in, in race pace. They are historically, they do put out good cars in qualifying, but for the reason that they just don't look after their tyres as well as other, as, as other teams. So uh, it'll be interesting to see, can he hang on to this car and can he make it last for the entire race distance? Yeah, we've seen, haven't we? I mean, there's, there's, there's always a difference between qualifying pace and race pace. And, you know, it's apt, actually, that we've got that graphic in the bottom right of our screen of Suzuka. It is a circuit that particularly if you're caught in the dirty air of the car in front that absolutely eats tires because it, it's it's so fast and uh, such a high downforce circuit it relies so much on downforce for a for a quick lap and um, if you haven't got that downforce activated because you're stuck in the dirty air of the car in front, then it's the tyres that are doing all the work and, and very quickly you do see them start to grain up. Matsushita shouldn't have that problem leading from the front, assuming he can get away hot. But as we said, there is a, a very stark difference between qualifying pace and race pace. And today we'll see really for the first time what that B-Max is like under race pace conditions running from the front. Also as well, he's got to be very careful about the different split strategies that will be in play today. There will be some guys who will come into the pit straight away when the pit window opens, whereas other guys may stay out and go to the, almost to the very end of the race and just, just duck into the pits right before the pit window closes. So uh, you may not always, even though you may be leading uh, on track, you know, in track position, there could be someone else further down the field who, was, who pitted early, made up that, 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 that time, and then when he makes his pit stop, you know, we'll, we'll come out in front. Yeah, strategy always plays a part here. Uh, as Kiyoshi Muruoka, the boss at Dokomo Team Dandelion, he's a great character, uh, prepares himself for race start now. Everybody has got optimum tyre temp in and, uh, and brake temperature up, but for these two, Nobuhari Matsushita and Toshiki Oyu, who've already been sat on the grid for 15 to 20 seconds as everyone else takes up their grid slot at the back, they are losing tyre temp, they're losing brake temperature. So they'll be begging Tatiana Calderon towards the back of the grid. Great to see those grandstands filling up, isn't it? We haven't seen that for a long time, but they'll be begging Tatiana Calderon to take up their grid slot so they can get this race underway. He's already lost significant tyre temperature and that's not where you want to be. So. Keep your eyes on the red lights. The marshal at the back will fly the, will uh, wave the green flag when he's happy. There it is. We're going to get red lights any second now. Four, three, two, 
one. When they go out, we are racing here at Suzuka. The final round of Super Formula 2021 is go. It's a good start from Nobuharu Matsushita. Tomoki Nojiri pulls out to the outside. A good start from him. He sticks around the outside of Toshiki Oyu. That's is that not going to make that work for him, no. But a great start from Tomoki Nojiri up to third. Meanwhile, Nobuharu Matsushita leads. It's a clean getaway for everybody else. Tatiana Calderon at the back making up a spot. Meanwhile, Nirai Fukutsumi leaning on Tomoki Nojiri for the first time through the S curves. What a start from Tomoki Nojiri from fifth to third. A good start too from Hiroki Otsu in the second of the Mugen cars. But it is Nobuharu Matsushita who leads here at Suzuka from Toshiki Oyu. What a start that was. Nice and clean, really hard racing there. You see Nojiri making up two places there, but then coming under pressure there from one of the, uh, the Docomo cars there, really coming close to uh, making contact, but nice clean start. No incident so far. It's this first lap where oh, you can see Tsushiki Oyu getting all out of shape on the way out of Spoon there. Oof, contact. We see a bit of action from Giuliano Alessi and Senna Sakaguchi. Those two cannot afford to take each other out. Both battling for Rookie of the Year as Hiroki Otsu gets it done. On Nirai Fukutsumi. Fukutsumi going backwards at the moment now. Those Mugen cars have started hot. Tomoki Najiri in third. Hiroki Otsu up to fourth. Hiroki Otsu's made up three places already. As Tomoki Najiri goes to the inside of Toshiki Oyu, he's going to make that one stick for him. Najiri up to second now. Toshiki Oyu hangs it on around the outside. He'll be on the inside going into the S curves. That's brave. Najiri stays there. He's got oh, the inside. Contact. We have a wheel banging and Oyu off into the gravel. That's what happens when you stick it around the outside. Eventually, someone's going to run out of space. And Toshiki Oyu comes back into traffic in front of one of the impul cars. That's what happens because the speed is building. Eventually, someone is going to run out of space. And in this case, it was Toshiki Oyu. It was brave to hang on around the outside there, Plowy. Well, awesome racing there. Not one of them wanted to give an inch to side by side through for the S curves there. And uh, in the end, oh, you came out worse, but wow, what close racing. And the jury there running wide, you know, has he got a puncture? He looks like uh, a contact there with OU. Let's, let's see if he's caused any damage to that car. Well, there was, there was contact for sure. We're just looking at the front wing. That's where I'd be going there. And some, again, you can just pick up some puncher. The th the, what I can say is that we didn't see any clear debris flying off either of the cars. For me, it was just a, it was just a tap. But I think it's the rain that's caused Tomoki Najiri oh, to... Oh, yeah, we're looking at the screens now. It is coming down harder. ...to outbreak himself into the hairpin. Now these tyres will, once you've got temperature into them, they'll work in the damp conditions, but once it's really starting to come down, obviously you need to go to the slick. The question is, how hard do you push? How hard do you lean on them? And the question is, how long would this rain last? Is it worth sticking out on these slick tyres until the pit window, and then when the pit window does open, do you go to wet? Because is it going to keep on getting wetter, or, or is you just have to live with these uh, slick tyres in the rain conditions? Hiroki Otsu coming under pressure from Nirai Fukutsumi who gets the job done on the push to pass system. Otsu choosing not to uh, go side by side with him all the way through the S curves. He had a front row seat of um, the action between Tomoki Najiri and Toshiki Oyu on the previous lap. So Nirai Fukutsumi now up to third and chasing down Tomoki Najiri, that rain is starting to come down now. And again, it's just, you've just got a feel. It's like driving on eggshells now because you're running on slicks. And provided you've got temp in those tyres, the grip is still there. Uh, both Mugen cars are after a flying start. Tomoki, Tomoki Najiri got three spots and uh, also got four. So these, these cars are really turned on in these uh, conditions. The big loser at the moment, Toshiki Oyu, who started on the front row of the grid down to eighth. In his fight for second place between Tomoki Najiri, he just lost out, ended up in the gravel. Currently running down in eighth place. 
Meanwhile, Tomoki Najiri's next victim is Nabuharu Matsushita, who at the moment leads by 2.1 seconds, while all the action's been going on behind as Ryo Hirakawa sticks it around the outside of Hiroki Otsu, going through the spectacular 130R, and that's brave, Plowy. It's all go here at Suzuka. He's a man on the mission right now. He's up five places from his starting grid. Up, up to P4 right now. He's, he's definitely a man on, on their mission. Hiroki Otsu going backwards at the moment. Sasha Fenestra is now looking to put it up the inside of Hiroki Otsu. Didn't get the job done there, but Otsu going backwards. That's the problem. When, once you lose a spot, then you start driving in your mirrors. It's so easy just to lose focus and lose that, that forward momentum. You know, when, once you start going backwards, then you start going on the defensive. He's just got to reset, you know, reset his brain and, and just get his eyes forward and, and start looking in the mirrors. Yeah, eyes forward. Start looking at the car in front. That's what you're chasing. And uh, and as you said, once you've gone back a couple of places, you start to to naturally drive in your mirrors. Uh, and uh, and as a result, you're driving defensively, and everyone else ahead of you starts to scamper away. It's all a a psychological aspect of motorsport, and as Plowy said, all he can do now is reset and start focusing on the gearbox of the car in front. That's Ritomo Miata running stone last. Off camera, something must have happened to him because he's running right at the back of the... Here you go, we're going to see what's happened here. So this is just coming through Spoo. Oh, oh, he's just, just had a spin. It. Yeah, so... Uh, Curbs in the, in the rain is a big no-no. Any time that the rain comes down on the curb, it's just like ice. Look at that flat spot as well. So that's, that's not going to do his tyres any good at all. Nasty flat spot on the rears, you can see that. But yeah, just just getting caught out coming through Spoon. And, um, that, that's the driver 101. You, you know, in the rain, you, you stay off white lines and you stay off the curbs at all costs. Yeah, in the wet, wet paint is um, incredibly slippery. You just don't go near them. And you saw it like there, it's, it's just like black ice. Drive through penalty for Nobuharu Matsushita. We'll try and bring you more on what's happened there, but that's massive. So Nobuharu Matsushita, our race leader, has a drive through penalty, which means Tomoki Nojiri will be our new race leader on default. We'll try and find out exactly what's happened there. I, I, looking at the start, I, I don't believe he, he had a jump start, but like you said, the start there, he had guys working on the car, and I, I suspect that if, if he had guys working on the car past a certain point, then, then maybe that was a violation. Let's take a look at the start here. Did he get the jump? It looked, no, it looked, looked fairly clean to me. It looked like it didn't look like a jump start. I suspect possibly Plowy, as we said, we saw those mechanics working on the car. And normally once the one minute board is out, which it, it was at that point, you are not allowed to touch the car. Was there a possible was there a little movement there? Maybe a little creep, you know, whether or not the, these uh, grid spots have got sensors. But if, the, if it's a driver penalty for that, that's a bit harsh. It might have been the minor, most minor of creeps, but We'll, we will try and, and, and bring you confirmation of that. Meanwhile, Tomoki Nojiri had a spectacular start. He just got that Mugen car hooked up and scampered away. Picked up a couple of spots instantly. Currently running second overall. But with that drive-through penalty for Nobuharu Matsushita, which is going to spoil his afternoon, Tomoki Nojiri is on course for a race win here at Suzuka as uh, Matsushita peels into the pit lane to take his drive-through. And that's uh, going to bring him out right at the back of the field. So our new race leader, Tomoki Najiri from Nirai Fukutsumi. Ryo Hirakawa in third. Good start from him. Hirakawa actually started this race down in ninth. So Hirakawa had a spectacular start. As you can see on the left of your screen, Matsushita goes from hero to zero in the space of one drive-through penalty. And he's gone from leading this race to stone last. And um, for that man there, Satoshi Motoyama, who is um, the most successful Super Formula driver um, across all the different uh, eras of this, of, of when it was Formula th Japanese Formula 3000 and everything else, he'll be very disappointed to, uh, to have seen what's happened there because uh, there's no question that Matsushita had the pace to, to run this race.
now all he can do is get his head down and start picking people off. And it's heartbreaking. You know, he really needed a good result. You know, for such a small team, a one-car team, they, they were desperate for a, for a good result here to uh, not, not only for himself but for sponsors and negotiations. You know, to, to keep his seat for next season. So it would have been uh, perfect to end the year with a win. If you are just joining us, we are live for the final round of Super Formula 2021 from Suzuka. And what a start to this race it has been. We're coming to the end of lap six now. Tomoki Nigiri, who started fifth, currently leads this race. Toshiki Oyu, who was in second place, came under pressure from Nigiri and for Four corners through turn one, two, three, and four. They were side by side. Eventually, Oyu ran out of road and ended up in the gravel. And uh, as a result of Nobuharu Matsushita, who started from pole, picking up a drive-through penalty, Tomoki Nojiri now leads and is chasing his third Super Formula victory here at Suzuka. You see there, Plowy, just the difference between qualifying times. We're running in the 141s, you know, the high 141s. Yesterday, we were qualifying in the high 136s, and that's just as a result of tyre management and, of course, all the extra fuel that you're running at race pace as well. I mean, the, the, these cars are fueled to run from the start of the race right to the end. So, you know, we are running at four, you know, nearly five seconds a lap slower. And, um, and of course, track conditions won't help that either. Not at all. I mean, I've been, been fully brimmed up with fuel. You, you take it on board an extra 70 or 80 kilo of fuel at least and that has a massive effect on these cars which are very weight sensitive in terms of braking ability cornering ability if you carry an extra it's basically carrying like an extra body in the car almost i'm just hearing now i can confirm that nobuharu matsushita just crept forward just before the lights went out, he got the car stopped, but that creep was enough for him to pick up a jump start penalty. And um, you know, it could be a simple thing as just he might have popped the car into neutral to wait for everybody else to take up their slot on the grid. And as he's pulled in the clutch and dropped it into first, occasionally these cars can just nudge forward. And um, it could be something as simple as that. He was just trying to protect the clutch. Didn't want to hold it in first on the clutch for that amount of time while everyone else took up their grid slot. So he's dropped it into neutral. As he's gone to pull first, it's just clunked forward. And, uh, and as a result, he's picked up a penalty because it looked, when the lights went out, it looked nice and clean the start. It didn't look like it jumped. But you, we, we said when we saw it, perhaps just a little creep before that the final light went out, Plowy. Yeah, that, you know what? That is incredibly harsh. That's a right kick in the teeth, that is. I mean, uh, the grand scheme of things, did he really get an advantage out of that? But I guess the rules are the rules, are there for a reason. And, it, and it's black and white, you know, if you creep at the start, then it's a drive-through penalty. But really, as a driver, I'd, I'd be kicking myself right now. We need to see that again, and, and, and we'll examine it more in the, in the post-show. But just looking back at it, I, I think there might have been the most minor of creeps. Then he stopped. Then the lights went out and then he got going, but that creep enough to give him a, uh, a drive-through penalty in the eyes of the stewards. Nevertheless, we are running here at Suzuka. Tomoki Nigiri leads from Nirai Fukutumi. Ryo Hidekawa up six places into third. Hiroki Otsu currently running fourth from Tadasuke Makino. There's your top five. The gap between Nigiri and Fukutumi at the moment, 1.3 seconds as they come round to complete lap eight here at Suzuka. Plowy, look, let's talk tyres because we know that this Yokohama tyre, it's not a it's not a super soft compound. This tyre will quite easily run the length of this race. Um, it's sort of a medium to hard compound tyre, isn't it? So we know it'll run the length of this race. Strategy is what's going to come into key here, into play here at Suzuka. It always does. Yeah, the, the key Chinese is, is, is all about traffic management and, and getting into clean air. So we, we know this tyre can run the entire race. It's, it's, it is quite a hard compound tyre. Uh, but it, it, you've got to do the opposite of what the car in front of you does. So if, if you're stuck in traffic and you can't make your way through because of the dirty air coming off the car in front, then, then what do you do? Do you go in, you pit early, get yourself into fresh air, and then just bang in qualifying laps to try to do the undercut, or in some cases to do the overcut. So if the car in front of you pits, now you've got a load of space in front of you, lots of clean air, then you just stay out on those old tires and chase the, the fresh air in front of you. 
So, tyre management absolutely critical here at Suzuka. I can tell you the gap between Tomoki Nigeria and Nirai Fukusumi down to just over a second. And this is a carbon copy of what we saw at round two. Nirai Fukusumi is fired up for victory here. At round two earlier in the year, he was robbed of victory. He stuck it on pole. This man stuck it on pole and he was leading the race when he got a puncture. And the man in front of him right now, Tomoki Nigiri, picked up the spoils. Nirai Fukutumi is here to right that wrong. And the gap came down by six tenths on the previous lap. We're now running at a second. It looks to be less than that coming into the Casio Triangle. What will it be as they cross the line now? Six tenths of a second. So Nirai Fukusumi closing the gap and starting to put a bit of pressure on Tomoki Najiri. And if those two start squabbling, Rio Hidakara will be onto them in absolutely no time at all. So we've got a great battle on our hands for the top three at the moment. Nobuhari Matsushita looking to put a move on. Tatiana Calderon coming down into turn one. And uh, that was the man who was leading this race. That B-Max car was on pole. And uh, unfortunately, that minor jump start resulted in a drive-through penalty. And he goes right to the back of the field. And he's got some serious work to do. Plowy, just looking at that dandelion car. He's always been... It's always been... Uh, so hot on the brakes, you see him just closing up. Okay, are we going to see the Dokimo Dandelion team out there? Now, is this a little bit of mind games with the Mugen guys, or are they going to bring in either Makino or Nirai Fukutsumi? It is clear to me that Fukutsumi has got the pace advantage over Najiri, but you just can see there, you just can't get within a second of, of uh, the car in front. And once she's getting to that eight tenths sort of range, then that's where the, the dirty air really takes takes effect. So maybe he's just got to come in now, do, do the undercut. Starting to put a bit of pressure on Tomoki Najiri. It would be a strange time for Fukutsumi to pit. There's no question about that because he'll come back out in traffic. So, Fukuzumi, I'm sure, will just be um, will be biding his time with Tamaki Najiri. Now we saw as a classic example of getting it wrong on the way into the Casio Triangle. He just pulled to the right hand side, got his line wrong to, going into the the final right left turn as we start to see cars coming into the pit lane. That compromised Fukuzumi's speed coming down the main straight. Najiri might have just backed him up a little bit. There you go. That's what the Docomo team dandelion car. Um, pit crew were waiting for. Tezuke Makino oh, in the pit. Issue oh, there. Boxer Newts. Oh, issue there with, with the left rear tyre. Just can't get the wheel on the back on. Oh, that's going to cost them a, a good seven or eight seconds there. It's going to drop him well down the order. It's incredibly frustrating for uh, Tadasuke Makino, and, and it was extremely close between Giuliano Alesi and Makino on the way out. I'm sure the stewards will be having a look at that release from the Tom's team. Meanwhile, Nobuharu Matsushita uh, makes his stop early. So this is the strategy we're starting to see. The pit window has just opened. So we're starting to see some cars come in now, and they'll run to the end of the race. Honestly, I'm quite surprised to see Matsushita in, in so early. I would, have, I would have expected him to stay out and, and try to, uh, to to make hay out there while, while the other cars were pitting. So, you know, he's pitted early with, with the early batch of cars and, and now he's going to be stuck in traffic with those guys. Yeah, it would have made sense for him to stay out while everyone else comes in ahead of him and he starts banging in some hot laps. Nirai Fukutsumi into the pit. So the man in second place comes into the pits. He obviously feels he hasn't got what, it, what he needs to get past Tomoki Najiri. So Nirai Fukutsumi into the pits. The Docomo team dandelion we saw just a moment ago had an issue with that rear left wheel with Tadasuke Makino. They cannot have that problem again now. That's the man in second place. He's had a spectacular drive so far. It all looks good at the moment. Hiroki Otsu there in the pits as well. A safe release. And uh, Fukutsumi out. And out into clear air as well, Plowy. So now Fukuzumi has got to get the hammer down now. He's got to put in a qualifying lap here or two. 
just to, to try to close that, that gap and do the undercut on Nigeria. Now, now what, what's Nigeria going to do? If I was the Team Ugin, it's time to come in and pit and to, to cover off the undercut, right? What's, what's going to happen? Because Nigeria is going to be out on circuit with hot tyres. Well, meanwhile, Fukuzumi is going to be spending a lap or two getting the tyre into temperature range. Now, to, to protect that lead, I think Nigeria should pit right now just to cover that, that undercut. It all depends on how much true pace he's got in the car. If Nigeria can switch it on for the next two or three laps to cover that off, then... Um, you know, time will tell. But as you said, if if uh, if he feels like he's going flat out now, I mean, look, there you go. So he's on the he's on the button already. So Nigeria's getting the hammer down, and that, and that is in response to Fukuzumi's pit. Yep, yep, coming into the pit lane. So Tomoki Nigiri choosing to come into the pit lane. Ryo Hirakawa will take the lead of this race. Now, what's Hirakawa going to do? Is he going to stay out? And we've seen him do that previously. Hirakawa might stay out, decide he wants to bang in three or four hot laps. Meanwhile, Tomoki Nigiri stops in the pits. I'd love to. There we go. It's got to be a nice, clean stop from this pit crew who hasn't let him down all year. 6.6 .6 seconds. We didn't see the time from Nirai Fukutsumi, and that was so critical. Still no sign of Nirai Fukutsumi. I wonder, did he have a problem in the pit lane? There he is on the button. So Fukutsumi's coming, tearing down the start finish straight, and it's enough. Tomoki Najiri with a clean pit stop and that previous lap has opened the gap up to Nirai Fukutsumi. Now, that, that may be as a result of that slow out lap, but now, now Najiri is going to be going on, on, on cold tyres for, for you know, a lap or two. So this is the time for Fukuzumi to really push and, and force the issue. All go between Giuliano and Lacey going big time on the defensive from Tadasuke Makino. Meanwhile, we're looking at Nirai Fukutsumi, who's already passed Tomoki Nojiri. So off our cameras, Nirai Fukutsumi has made a move on Tomoki Nojiri, who, remember, is trying to get heat into those tyres. And I'm being told that Tomoki Nojiri will have five seconds added to his overall race time as a result of dangerous driving. I suspect that's come from his contact with Toshiki Oyu earlier on. For me, there was nothing dangerous about that. That was two racing drivers choosing to stay alongside each other. Oyu was as mu was at much to fault as Tomoki Najiri. In the meantime, though, Nirai Fukusumi on hotter tyres, warmer tyres, has passed Tomoki Najiri. Here we go. Sticks it around the outside, going through the S-curves, heading up the hill, and that's that job done. So, Fukusumi on track, passes Tomoki Najiri. Meanwhile, Ryo Hirakawa has just set the fastest lap of the race with a 141.0. That's six times clearer fastest of the next uh, fastest car on circuit. So he's really putting the hammer down right now. Uh, I suspect that he's just going to try to extend this first stint. Now he's got clean air. The tires are working for him. There's just no point stopping right now because if you do, you're just going to come out back in traffic and, and lose track position. So these tires are working for him. Let, let's see how far he can push this. At the moment, yeah, I suspect Rhea here to Carroll stay out. And, we, and like I said, we've seen it before. We've seen him opt to stay out, take the risk and say, like, no, listen, I feel like I've got the car underneath me. I'm in clean air. I'm just going to start banging in hot laps so that when we do take our pit stop, we're going to be there or thereabouts to win this race. If you are just joining us, Rio Hirakawa leads from Yui Sekaguchi, Yuji Kunimoto, Kazuyo Shima, and all, all four of those still need to make a pit stop. At the moment, the first of the cars who has pitted is Nirai Fukutsumi, currently running in fifth position from Tomoki Najiri in sixth. Rio Hirakawa, that man right there, is who we need to keep our eye on. So at the moment, the gap, 34.9. Here, here at Kawa peels into the pit lane. So here we go. This is for the overall lead of this race. The Team Impul crew have calculated that they reckon it'll be enough for Hirakawa to come in, stop, and get back out again in the lead of this race. While Tomoki Nigeria and Nirai Fukutsumi have been going head to head, and Hirakawa's been getting his head down silently, will we see a new race leader? 
We were looking for less than seven seconds, 7.1, that'll do. He's not got far to travel to get down to the bottom of the pit lane. There comes Nirai Fukusumi onto the main straight now. For me, Plowy, Hirakawa's going to get this done, but he is on cold tyres. Here comes Fukusumi on the right-hand side of your screen. Remember, Fukusumi on a warmer set of tyres that are up to temperature. Fukusumi's going to pass Hirakawa on this lap. I'm convinced of it. Absolutely eats him up. And Hirakawa now will spend the next lap desperately trying to get heat into those tyres. And our new race leader is Nirai Fukutsumi here at Suzuka. Wow, I can't believe that. For me, I just don't understand why, why they brought him in so early. You know, for me, the car was working, but they were fast. They were building a lead. And they, they, for me, that was just a bit, a bit too early. Yeah, I mean, the previous lap, Hirakawa was putting in the fastest lap of the race. It's, a, it's an interesting strategy, a strange strategy, but there we are. Hirakawa is in, he's pitted, and he's now falling back into the clutches of Tomoki Najiri, while Nirai Fukusumi is just scampering away in that Dokimo car as we reach the halfway point of this race. It has been a sensational finale to this year's Super Formula Championship so far. And we're not done yet there. The gap continues to come down between Tomoki Nojiri. It takes around a lap, a lap and a half to get these tyres up to temperature. Nojiri will know that he's chasing track position now and uh, he'll be doing everything he can to try and reel in here to Kawa before that black and gold car gets tyre temperature up and then life's going to be much, much harder for Tomoki Nojiri. And for me, Plowy, the big loser in this has been Nojiri. Absolutely, yeah. For me, that was a very harsh call there. You know, like you said, that that contact was was harsh, you know, really hard racing, and not a lot in it. But for me, that well, that wasn't a, a fair decision. Yeah, if you are just joining us, Tomoki Nojiri and uh, Toshiki Oyu, who started on the front row of the grid, um, went head to head. And the early stages of this race were side by side all the way through the first turn, through turns three and four. And uh, eventually something had to give and Toshiki Oyu ended up taking a trip through the gravel. But it was two drivers just racing hard and neither one of them wanted to give an inch. Eventually it was Oyu who, uh, who ran out of road. Um, as a result of that though, Tomoki Najiri has picked up a five second penalty. Looking at that gap now, Plowy, you can see Tomoki Najiri now starting to fall away from the back of that Team Impul car of Rio Hirikawa. Um, those tyres well up to temperature and uh, Najiri now dropping away from Hirikawa and uh, Hirikawa now starting to close the gap to Nirai Fukutsumi. How long will it be before Hirikawa is all over the the gearbox of that Docomo Team Dandelion car. Let's take a look at the gap as they cross the line. 1.5 seconds between Fukutsumi and Hirikawa. Your race leader, Yui Sekaguchi from Yuji Kunimoto. Uh, both of those cars still need to pit, so we are looking at our default race leaders now. Nirai Fukutsumi and that man there, Ria Hirikawa, in second place at the moment, have both pitted already. So Sekaguchi and Kunimoto both need to pit. I think this, is, this is where we're going to see, I think, for Kasumi putting a move on to Moki Najiri. There you go. That's where he got the job done. So Najiri just coming out on cold tyres. Couldn't get the tyres up to temperature quick enough. And um, that's the difference between a cold set of boots and a hot set of boots. There's a big slap of oversteer there. Did you see? He, uh, he was just trying to force the issue, get, get up close to Najiri, and uh, was overdriving a little bit and had a big dollop of oversteer. The thing is, you know that you've got a lap, maximum a lap and a half, before the the car in front that's on cold tyres will get those tyres up to temperature and any advantage you've got is gone. So Fukutsumi knew he had to get the hammer down and take advantage of the fact that Nojiri was on cold rubber. And um, 
As I said, within a lap, these tyres are up to temperature, particularly when you've got track temperature at around 25 degrees, which we've seen today, Plowy. Yeah, at the moment, though, Fukuzumi really struggling to make this set of tyres work. He, he's yet to break into the 140 range, 140, 1 minute 40 range. Meanwhile, here, both Hirokawa and Najiri are, are lapping in, in the mid 140s. So, yeah, the pace isn't there right now for Fukuzumi, and he's gonna, definitely going to come under pressure from Najiri and Hirokawa in the next couple of laps. Well, the gap was 1.5, it's now 1.2, so Hirokawa takes another three-tenths of a second out of Fukuzumi. There could be some strategy in this. Nirai Fukuzumi could just be doing what he needs to do in order to look after these tyres to the end of the race. Um, Tomoki Najiri just starting to drop back a little bit. It's Ryo Hirokawa at the moment who's, uh, who's punching in the fastest laps of the race. And uh, that man there, Yui Sekiguchi, currently leading here in Suzuka. And he's quietly been putting in some hot times as well out in front. So has Yui Sekiguchi dragged himself back into contention in this race? He started down in 14th after a disappointing qualifying session. Remember, he is driving for second place in the championship, comes into this weekend in second place with 47 and a half points to Shiki Oyu, who, um, who we did see take a trip off into the gravel, currently running down in 11th, uh, currently third. So Yui Sekiguchi needs to have a strong result here in Suzuka to uh, close out the runner-up position in this year's championship. And um... looking at the, uh, the differences right now, he's, uh, of, of all the cars that are pitted, he's got about 40 seconds uh, to P7, so by my calculations, it's about a 38 to 40 second pit, pit stop delta, the time that you lose during the pit stop and driving through pit lane. So if he was to stop right now, he would come out about, about P6 or P7. Which is a good jump, which is good, which is good work. You know, um, as I said, he started down in 14th, so um, he's, um, he'll be making advantage and, uh, of, the, uh, of the current pit lane situation, making a few undercuts there. But more importantly than that, these two, are uh, on track or, or default race leaders, Yui Sekiguchi. For me, Plowy, it's worth it until we start to see his times dropping off considerably, will stay out. Um, but uh, for now, Nirai Fukutsumi just coming under a little bit of pressure from Ryo Hirikawa. The gap now, when they, when they crossed the, the line previously, was down to a second. So Ryo Hirikawa is just nibbling each lap around three tenths of a second from. Nirai Fukutsumi. Now, uh, Hirokawa needs to be smart when to make this move. He'll be waiting for the opportunity to jump on the overtake system button, the little button that gives you an extra 50 to 60 horsepower, you know, increases the fuel flow rate into the engine and just gives you that, that bit of boost. So when he's on the button, you'll see the, the green LED around the roller hoop start flashing, and that's, that's, that's telling, you, telling us that, that he's on the overtake system. Well, that's Giuliano Alesi making Telesuke Makino work incredibly hard to get past him at the um, at the Casio Triangle, and uh, Giuliano Alesi saying, "No, you're not getting through there, pal." We've seen some incredibly defensive driving and some and a, and a bit of wheel banging this afternoon, Plowy. Well, Alessi is another guy who's fighting for his future right now. He uh, he's only filling in for the you know, Nakajima, who of course is racing in in, in the WEC. Sorry to interrupt weekend. you, Plowy. I'm just saying this is a classic example here now of getting caught in traffic. That's the slower car in front, and we saw Ria Hidekawa now has closed the gap right up on Nirai Fukutsumi. It's now just down to seven tenths of a second, and that gap has come as a result of just getting caught up in the slower traffic, and that's the last thing that Nirai Fukutsumi will have wanted to have seen. Of course, yeah, now so he's under pressure now. He's really got to hit his marks. He can't afford to put a single wheel wrong right now, but Hirokawa will be looking for the opportunity, getting close up to the gearbox on, you know, in the car in front and getting on the overtake system that we were talking about earlier. Yuji Kunimoto, the man who was running in second in that KCMG car, now is coming out. And uh, by my calculations, we'll be down somewhere around 13th or 14th. Yeah, comes out just ahead of Nobuhara Matsushita. But remember, he is on cold tyres, so he will, uh, Yuji Kunimoto will on track end up around sort of 16th or 17th after that pit stop. Matsushita, meanwhile, currently running in 14th. Yeah, a bit of a miserable afternoon for him, really. He's not really made a lot of inroads since that 
uh, that drive through penalty, he's, uh, he's, he's found it hard to make his way back through the field. Yeah, it's been um, you know, kind of an afternoon, a, a qualifying session that was spectacular, but um, he's, he went from hero to zero with that with that jump start, and there's no question that he could have won this. He could have won this race. Meanwhile, Yui Sekaguchi, his last lap was of 1:42.1. So we're just starting to see the lap times drop off a little bit from Yui Sekaguchi. How long will it be before the the team Impul guys do do decide to pull him in um, to make his pit stop? We are starting to see those lap times drop off a little bit. If you notice. The, uh, the, the LED around his roll hoop has, has just turned red, and that's an indication that he's got less than 20 seconds of overtake system left to use. So it's clear that he's been abusing that, that just to try and gain an advantage, getting the extra horsepower to get faster lap times while he's in, in clean air. So the gap between Fukutsumi and Hirakawa, eight tenths at the moment. Um, seems to be fairly steady. Fukuzumi comfortably able to just seem to fend off the uh, the Impul car and respond to uh, to Rio Hirakawa's pace. Plowy, I can tell you that Yuji Kunimoto, who was running in second, has dropped down to 16th after that pit stop. So it gives you an idea of of the work that Yui Sekaguchi's got to do. Currently running just under 19 seconds, clear of Nirai Fukutsumi. Kenta Yamashita in sixth is 41.5 seconds behind. So we should see Sekaguchi come out somewhere around sixth, seventh, eighth. But that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a, a group of cars that are close together. And remember, Sekaguchi's going to come out on cold tyres. We could see Sekaguchi drop down as far as, as 10th or 11th once he makes his pit stop because he's going to come back out in a gaggle of uh, of cars all chasing sixth place seventh place so um sekaguchi unfortunately has got a decision to make he either stays out and keeps i mean his last lap was a 141.8 and his fastest has been a 141.5 so the pace is still in that car for me i'd be keeping sekaguchi out in the uh in the clear air but we did see the team impul cars uh team impul pit crew in the pit lane, ready to receive somebody. Lap 22 of 30. Bit of action between Toshiki Oyu and Naoki Yamamoto. Teammates going head to head, and that's uh, the old the old guard sticking one on the youngster. Yeah, Yamamoto really needs this. It's a bit of confidence boost. He's been living in the shadow of OU all season, and uh, hey, for the disastrous season that, that Yamamoto has had, this is that little bit of confidence he just needs to go into the off season. Just just to kind of regain that team superiority. But uh, what what a disastrous season that he's had. Yeah, it's not been a it's been a year to forget for Yam Naoki Yamamoto. Up six places, currently running in tenth, and uh, it was a hell of a job round the, round the outside into turn one. It's a fair a fairly brave place to do it. You don't end up on the marbles there. We've seen it done occasionally before but um, those two will have been, been told to be on their best behavior and not take each other out there are the team impul pit crew Yui Sekaguchi decides he's gonna go for another lap so his best lap time so far is a 141.5 and he did that on lap 15 his last lap a 142 Zero one three. So he's lapping around half a second a lap slower. But remember, on lap 15, he probably still had the push to pass to play with. So Yui Sekaguchi is still doing a good job. What, they, what the team will want to avoid is bringing, is pitting him and then bringing him back out into a group of, of traffic of cars on cold tyres because he'll just get swallowed up and disappear back down towards the back of the field. So for one lap you do get on cold tires after your pit stop you do get punished and the last thing you want to do is come out and just get swallowed up by five or six cars and that's the difference obviously between running sixth on the road and running 12th or 13th look at hiroki otsu currently running fifth it's been a reasonably quiet afternoon for him 
He's you know, Segeuchi showing he's still showing really strong pace right now. The gap up to sixth place is 43 seconds, and that should just be enough to get the job done there. But Otsu right now, he, he's got to maintain position because he's losing time fast. About, set, about roughly about a second a lap to Segeuchi. So if he's not careful, he too will lose a position to Segeuchi. Here is a race leader coming through the Casio Triangle. Decides to go for another lap again. 142.012. So again, he's consistently putting in low 142s. And um, relative to Hiroki Otsu, who on the last lap put in a 142.6. Kenta Yamashita in sixth, who put in a 142.7. Yui Sekaguchi is going quicker and he is pulling away from them. The question that the issue though, Plowy, is that Sekaguchi on those cold tires is gonna get swallowed up. So that's what he's trying to avoid. He's trying to get down the road and, um, and not get punished on those cold tires. Meanwhile, in the battle currently for second place on track, but uh, by default, once Sekaguchi does pit, these, will, these two will be our, our race leaders. Now the gap has come increased to 1.5 seconds between Fukutsumi and Hirakawa to Moki Najiri, a further 3.6 back. So, has Hirakawa got enough to, to make a charge? I feel like he's just dropped back a little bit just to get the temperature back in the car and, and to uh, let his tyres cool down and maybe go for another push at the end. If you spend too long in, in, the, on, in the dirty air on, on, in the gearbox of the car in front, then you start blistering your tyres up. Yeah, time will tell. Is Ryo Hirakawa playing it smart? The thing is that we always saw that Hirakawa, that Nirai Fukutsumi was able to respond to Hirakawa's pressure and pace earlier on when he was chasing him down as we look at Yui Sekaguchi. What's he going to do this time? Is he coming into the pits or is he... Nope, he's going for another lap here in Suzuka. So the team Impul boys waiting in the pit lane. And... Uh, for me, he'll just be looking as he's, he's just put in a 141.9. Yui Sekiguchi is going quicker and quicker with each lap. Stay out and pick off as many as you can. I suspect, player, he'll want to run as late as he can do to give people on those, so that when he's on those cold tyres, he's giving people less laps to uh, to catch him and get past him because we'll, by that point, we'll be running right up towards the end of this race as Tomoki Najiri completes another lap. He's running it incredibly consistent. The last nine laps, Sekiguchi has been running within two tenths of a second every single lap. He's just nailing these, these uh, lap times. And by comparison, look at Hiroki Otsu, the 142.9. He can't match the pace of Yui Sekiguchi. So the difference between Sekiguchi and Otsu now th just creeping just above 36 seconds. So. Of course, that doesn't add the punishment that you get for, for coming out of the pits on, on cold rubber. Remember, Hiroki Otsu's running on, on warm tyres, uh, as is everybody else. So, you know, Yui Sekiguchi's going to get punished for at least a lap. It's not just a case of what you lose by making your pit stop. It's what you lose on your outlap as well on, on cold rubber. And Nobu Nobuharu Matsushita there. On, on damage limitation. Trying to uh, put a move up the inside of Senna Sakaguchi into nice the You move. don't see that. That's no, You don't see that very often. That was nicely done. Round the outside of the first part of the Casio Triangle. So he's got the inside into the left hander and um, sticks, what, sticks one on Senna Sakaguchi. A, a nice and clean move from uh, Nobuharu Matsushita. So, Cheney, let's talk about rookie of the season for right now for, uh, for a moment. Uh, looking at the standings right now, as it stands, Atsu winning in fifth place. He's going to get the job done. Yeah, and, uh, and it comes as a result of um, his fantastic and, and first ever win. There he is right there. Uh, last time out at Twin Ring Matege, it was a spectacular drive from the youngster. And... Uh, in that, in that Mugen car. And that's why we keep seeing the difference between himself and Yui Sekaguchi. Otsu can't afford to uh, to lose a play Sekaguchi, but I don't think he's going to, because as I said, when they do pull that team in, Paul Carr, 
Sekiguchi is going to get punished on cold tyres. So at the moment, Hiroki Otsu on course to get the job done for Rookie of the Year. You know, he's had, he's had a great season, of course, and I don't want to take anything away from him, but coming into your first season in Super Formula and your teammate is the, the champion-elect in the jury, and you've got that reference point at every circuit you go to. You've got so much you can learn from. You've got a, a great mentor you know, in the, in the champion. So not that he's had it easy, but he's had a better opportunity than other drivers in the field. Yeah, no question. He's had the opportunity to learn, hasn't he? He's had all the data that's been transferred across the team from Tomoki Najiri's car. As Yui Sekiguchi, I'm sure he's going to take another... Yeah, he's going to run right up to the end of this race. He'll run as long as he can on that set of tyres. But uh, just getting back to Hiroki Otsu, he's, had, um, he's been in the right place uh, all year to learn and uh, you know, just looking at his, his results from, from the year we go right back to Fuji at the start qualified 8th, finished 16th and we went on to Suzuka for round 2, qualified 9th, finished 5th which is uh, where he's running right now on track Autopolis, qualified 11th finished 6th Sugo 8th and finished 10th Matagi qualified 7th finished 10th and then of course he had that dream weekend last time out at Mategi where he stuck it on pole and converted that to a victory and so often after you have a result like that something just flicks in your head you get so much confidence oh Yui Sekiguchi having a big moment on the way out under the underneath the tunnel coming up into the hairpin but um, yeah you just once you had once you've had a, a good weekend you've taken a victory you've taken pole and uh, and you convert that into a win something just flicks in your head doesn't it Plough? you become a better driver you just get confidence and it's so difficult to explain but um, as to why that happens it's almost like something unconsciously changes in you but you become so hungry for more and uh, you know Hiroki Otsu having a good weekend once again here at, at Suzuka and, and on course to uh, to wrap up Rookie of the Year. I think in some ways you, you become relaxed you know you're not chasing that first victory anymore you don't have that that stigma you don't have that pressure to to, to get it done I think that once you get that first win out of the way then it's uh, that, that pressure is lifted and then you can just drive more freely you take more risks knowing that knowing that you can get it done. Yui Sekiguchi, this time peels off into the pit. So here is our race leader coming to make his stop, and they have got to get this right. This has got to be so neat, so tidy, so clean. You cannot afford to have any time loss. Remember, Yui Sekiguchi is going to come out of the pits on cold tyres. Nirai Fukutsumi and Ria Hirakawa are going to come through, and, of course, this is, this is all good for... We're looking for less than seven seconds, 6.7. It's nice and clean. Lights up those rears on the way out. So, where is Otsu? Here comes Hiroki Otsu now on track into turn one. Yui Sekiguchi will be ahead, but remember, he's on cold tyres, and I think Hiroki Otsu is going to be all over the back of Yui Sekiguchi. By the time we get halfway through this lap, already you can see the gap coming down massively. Look, he's just reeling him in. What can Yui Sekiguchi do to keep Hiroki Otsu behind? Look at the speed differential just coming into the final section of the S-curves as we head up the hill. It's painful to watch, isn't it? A guy on the outlap, there's just, just no grip available there. He's just tiptoeing around on these stone-cold tyres. But Otsu, he's got to get the job done. He's going to absolutely eat him up it'll be simple things like traction just coming out of the hairpin just weaving there just trying to get any extra bit of heat in the tires there he's, he's uh he's just trying desperately to generate the heat there you go you just heard the revs rise there you just spun up the rear wheels where you just didn't have the uh the track the same traction Hiroki Otsu's running out of time though he's got until the end of this lap and then Yui Sekiguchi's tires will be up to temperature Otsu needs to get the move done and he knows he needs to get this move done On the push to pass button, doing everything he can to reel him in. Yui Sekiguchi going for on the defensive. Otsu all over the back of him now. What can he do on the brakes into the Casio triangle? Sekiguchi goes defensive. Otsu goes for the outside. Oof. He's not going to get that done there. Sekiguchi covering him off. Once again, he's on the push to pass button. And the team Impul crew delighted to see that. Yui Sekiguchi straight away sticks it over on the right hand side on the wall and now those tyres will be up to temperature. Two laps remaining of this race here at Suzuka. 
Well, what oh, what an outlap there by uh, Segaguchi. He, uh, he he drove fantastically well there to generate the heat and defended brilliantly going into that last corner there. He knew that he had to keep Otsu behind him. Yeah, those tyres up to temperature now, Plowy, and now we can see him starting to scamper away. It's actually, the advantage has reversed now. Yui Sekaguchi on fresher rubber than Hiroki Otsu. So Yui Sekaguchi will probably start to pull away. Meanwhile, Nirai Fukutsumi on the penultimate lap of this race, currently 1.2 seconds clear of Ryo Hirikawa, and it looks like Fukutsumi is going to get the job done. Here at Suzuka, meanwhile, Tomoki Lajiri in the background on the push to pass button, doing everything he can to try and reel in the, the, two, uh, the two leaders ahead of him. I think you've left it a little bit too late, but it's going to be a last lap sprint to the flag. As they crossed the line on the previous lap, it was 1.2 seconds. It's now down to seven tenths. I am sure, remember, Plowy, that Rio Hirikawa is driving for the team Impul, team's standings and uh, i'm sure that they'll be on the phone on the on the phone on the radio to him saying listen sekaguchi's currently running in fourth you're running second we're gonna pick up enough points to close out the team standings don't do anything stupid now impul have not wrapped up that team title since 2010 so this is a big weekend for them, and currently with Ryo Hirikawa in second and Yui Sekaguchi running in fourth, who had a spectacular outlap. They will wrap up the team's title. We are on the final lap of the final round of the Super Formula Championship 2021. Nirai Fukusumi, the man who was punished here at round two a few months ago, earlier in the year when he picked up that puncture, has righted that wrong and is on course to take victory here at Suzuka. It has been a spectacular drive from the Docomo team dandelion racing man. Just the Casio triangle to clear, flicks it left, flicks it right, buries the throttle for the final time of the year and Nirai Fukutsumi wins in Suzuka to take round seven of the Super Formula Championship 2021. Team Impul, Ryo Hidekawa's finished second and Tomoki Nojiri, your 2021 champion, confirmed in third. Meanwhile, that man for me, Plowy, is the driver of the day. Yui Sekaguchi started 14th on the grid. He crosses the line to finish fourth in what was a spectacular stint on the... Uh, on a single set of tyres, and Hiroki Otsu in fifth. It has been a spectacular year from him. Yeah, what a drive there by uh, Fukuzumi. Perfect from, from uh, lights to flag there. He's, he's totally redeemed himself from, uh, from losing that, that, that certain win in, in round two of the year. And uh, Nobuharu Matsushita crosses the line to finish this race 12th ahead of Sena Sakaguchi. There comes Ritomo Miyata as well. And uh, we expected more from both Matsushita and Miyata. Miyata had that spin earlier on. And Matsushita, who started on pole, had that drive-through penalty. And that was his afternoon over. It has been a frantic race here at Suzuka. The Super Formula of old is back. So much to talk about, Palawi, uh, in our post-show coming up as Tatiana Calderon crosses the line and uh, she finishes her year in 19th and uh, just under a minute and 20 behind our leaders. But it is that man, Nirai Fukutsumi, who takes the win here in Suzuka. And uh, Plowy, he had to work for it, coming under pressure from Rio Hirikawa, particularly after that first pit stop. A great drive from him. Oh, fantastic drive there. And uh, for a guy who's filling in the boots of uh, Yamamoto, taking the lead role in, in the team, this, this bodes well for the future. He's, he's really risen to the occasion. You know, already winning at Sugo this season, so outside on the jury he's the only driver to have more than a single victory this year and in, in a field that's so tight it's a 
for me, he's definitely going to be uh, one of the strong contenders for the championship next year. At, you know, and, and arguably should have been a strong contender for the championship this year. You know, uh, as I said, he started out at Fuji on fourth, finished third. Suzuka, the round two, he qualified on pole, then had that puncture. Sugo, he won it. And, um, you know, his year could have been very, very different, having closed out another victory again next year. Nirai Fukutsumi is a, a bright spark for to contend for the championship, no question about that. Good drive as well from that man, Ryo Hidekawa, um, confirming Team Impulse first team's title since 2010. And um, you know, he hasn't had the year he's wanted, but um, it's some consolation for Impulse. They leave as the, the team or manufacturers, uh, constructors, Champions for 2021 and um, Plowy again, as I said, Yui Sekaguchi for me is the is the driver of the day. It was a great stint from him in the middle of the race. Yeah, very measured, very controlled, sh really showing his experience. Did, he put in a measured performance there, just looking after the tyres, making them last for virtually the entirety of the race. Yui Sekaguchi just stopping on the uh, start finish straight. Um, entirely sure quite why he stopped there as the cars are being brought round normally we would see them peel off into the uh, into the pits but I think as it is the final race of the year we're going to see them all stop in front of the crowd which is um, it's a nice thing and that man Hiroki Otsu he's had a great year hasn't he and uh, can confirm that is uh, after his work this afternoon he is your 2021 rookie of the year and um, you know Plowy we saw it at the start of this show you know Alex Palau Toshiki Oyu Pierre Gasly rookie people who have drivers who have won the rookie of the year award have um, you know have gone on to do great things yeah I mean it's it's one of those awards that in the grand scheme of things you know it'll, it'll all be forgotten about next year but it's just really nice to have on your CV it's, it's, it's so prestigious you know to put your name on there on, on the list of all these drivers that have gone before you you know like you said Alex Palou he, he was a uh, rookie of the year a couple of years ago and it goes over the pond to IndyCar and becomes IndyCar champion this season and uh, you know Pierre Gasly of course as you know in Formula One you know the list goes on and on and uh, to put your name amongst the list of great drivers on that list is a uh, He's definitely going to show, you know, he's, he's going to be a driver for the future. As is this man, Nirai Fukutsumi. Um, a great drive from him. Tomoki Najiri, yeah, he can see what it means to him. And, um, uh, you know, I said it earlier, Plowy had his year gone slightly differently, particularly um, earlier on. You know, had he not had that puncher at Suzuka when he was leading, that's nice to see as well. Um, but uh, had he not had that puncture when he was leading the race at round two, had a better weekend at Autopolis when he qualified 18th and ended up finishing 13th. Everywhere else, he's been bang on the pace. He, um, he could have been, for sure, uh, in contention for, uh, for the overall championship this year. Instead, he came into this weekend uh, in fifth. And, um, a good drive from him. Yui Sekiguchi confirmed in second place uh, overall in the championship after a, a spectacular drive and uh, he'll be delighted with that. So Team Impul leave this weekend with Yui Sekiguchi second overall and Impul as the manufacturers or the team's champions for 2021. Just trying to work out my maths right now, but it looks like Fukuzumi will be jumping up the order in the in the standings as well. I'm just trying to see if he if he has finished second or maybe just finishing inside the top three. But still not a bad season for him. It's a uh, fantastic growth. You know he's such a talented driver, and uh, for me he's going to be one of the favourites for the the championship next year. I think as well it's just worth um, you know worth mentioning. As you see, uh, that's Naoki Yamamoto just coming over to congratulate Nirai Fukusumi on his on his victory. And uh, Tadasuke Makino, his teammate, coming over to say well done. As well, it's great to see, you know, those grandstands, they are starting to fill up again. And uh, I think the future is extremely bright for Super Formula, you know, looking at rules and reg changes for next year. And uh, it's brilliant to see the... Uh, you know the fans back out and uh, able to support uh, 
able to support motor racing again and their uh, and, and, their, and their heroes, you see Nirai Fukutsumi, just has to be weighed and his total weight there will be added to the total weight of the car so that they can, the scrutineers, the post-race scrutineers can just confirm that uh, they have been running at the, uh, the minimum weight limit allowed. And uh, that's nice to see, that's how every race, sh race series should finish uh, its season. All the cars lined up on the start finish straight like that. Uh, Nirai Fukutsumi lapping up the applause here at Suzuka. What a season it's been, though, Chenny. You know, Super Formula for me is it's the most underrated championship out there in in, uh, in the whole of motorsport. You know, if, if truly honest, you know, before working with you guys, you know, I, I'd only occasionally tune in to watch, but. Now that I've been working in the, in the you know the championship for a couple of years, you know I'm, I'm a massive fan. It's uh, the racing is intense. It's an uh, even playing field, and you can never tell from one race to the next who's going to win. Winner of the race, Nirei Fukuzumi. Congratulations. Thank you. So, this was the revenge for the second round last year, right? Yes, last year I had a good performance but couldn't win after that. This year I could win in Sugo, but in Motegi in the both races I had no points. So I was really feeling sorry for all the fans supporting me. And after that, I tried everything to correct those mistakes. Still, it was a very difficult situation for me. Yesterday in the qualifying, I was third, and today in the start, it didn't go well. But the weather was fine, and the team really supported me and built up the car in a really great way, and I could reach my goal. And thanks for your support, too. Your battle with Hirakawa in the end, you really defended the top position as an ace driver, I think. That will boost your confidence level, right? Excuse me? Yes, right. It's really to pass in Suzuka. That's what I know uh, from my battle with Otsu last year. But it's really important to get to sector three, and then you're quite safe. But it's so difficult to anticipate what happens. So I was trying to control the situation until the end, and I could do it. So I'm really relieved. When you saw the checkered flag, there was a big applause from the stands. One message for, for the fans, please. Thank you so much for your support all the time. I was in for the race for champion, season's champion. I couldn't become the champion. But I tried to finish with a good result, and I'm really happy about that. Thank you so much for your support, always. So there is your winner of round seven and the final round of the 2021 Super Formula Championship, Nirai Fukutsumi. What an afternoon it has been for him and we're not done yet. So much to get through from what was an action-packed race here in Japan. Join myself and Plowy for our post-show after this short break. Don't go anywhere. Check out the Motor Channel on Red Bull TV. Motorsports at its finest, all over the globe. Download the Red Bull TV app for free. And sign in to watch all of our content offline. 
Download the app now. The Wales Rally GP, one of the toughest events on the World Rally Championship calendar. TV sports reporter and racing enthusiast Mike Chen has decided he's going to race in it. Mike Chen. Driving. <laughs> That's a recipe for disaster. Follow Mike's every move, from training to racing. Going straight sideways. Now available on Red Bull TV. Becky Evans. Oh my God. AKA Queen B. I'm so excited. AKA the Queen of Cars is back with a new season. This year I'm going to prove I can make it to grassroots competition. What's the advice? The seat time. Seat time. The seat time. The seat time. It's going to be me to prove that I've got what it takes. Drift Queen Season 2, now available on Red Bull TV. After the global lockdown. Virus pandemic. National emergency. Formula One has been cancelled. The newly named Scuderia Alpha Tauri worked relentlessly to get ready for the new Formula One season. The world's getting back together again and we can get racing again. We are back in the game. Open the doors. Scuderia Alpha Tauri, now available on Red Bull TV. Cars for me, it's just an addiction. This is beyond the wildest dream. I was born to race. It's everything. I don't feel you can get that same feeling anywhere else. Oh my God! You're on board for the greatest motorsport ride on the planet. We want to make this as loud, as fast, as crazy as possible. The very best of European drifting. The toughest hard enduro event. Welcome, everybody, to Straight Rhythm. It's out of control. Oh! Oh, my goodness! Hold on to that thing! My heart has never raced that fast in my life. MotoGP is underway. You said it. Why not? Oh, you don't have time to think. You just drive. Like, what a Grand Prix. That is unbelievable. The Motor Channel on Red Bull TV. He is one of the greatest racers of all time. 2018 was his last season as an active rider in Moto GP. An intimate look at the highs and lows of an incredible career. Danny Pedrosa. The Silence of the Samurai. Now available on Red Bull TV. Experience select live events in a whole new way on Red Bull TV. Athletes' profiles and KPIs. Start lists and results. Head-to-head -head analysis and animated guides. Track information and obstacles. Keep up with your favorite athletes and artists. The new sidebar is available exclusively on Red Bull TV. Once again, the world's best riders team up for Moto9. Nine? Are you kidding me? I can't believe they're doing another one of these. Hit the trail with Dungy, Muskin, and many more. Riding dirt bikes to me is about the homies, and it's a way to harness that inner kid in all of us. Every piece of the dirt bike world in one epic ride. Moto9, the movie, now available on Red Bull TV. We're gonna transform the Lamborghini Huracan into an absolute drift weapon. This is beyond the wildest dream. We're gonna drop a grinder through it, wide body it, slam it. That's a typical Mike, always. Find your limit, go back from there. Hey, hey, my heart has never raced that fast in my life. Drift Lamborghini, now available on Red Bull TV. Welcome back to Super Formula and uh, our post show for round seven and the final round of what has been a fascinating 
year of, of racing. That man there, Nirai Fukutsumi, has got the job done uh, here in Suzuka. It was a spectacular drive, lights to finish, and there is so, so much to talk about. It was a frantic race from the word go, so there's lots to get through. Plowy, fantastic drive from Nirai Fukutsumi. Yeah, fantastic. Really uh, showing his dominance today, and uh, he seems to like this circuit, doesn't he? You know, stick it on pole in round two, and then missing out on the win with that, with that cruel um, puncture. But today, he's got the job done. He's redeemed himself and uh, put himself as one of the, the favourites for, for next season. I think that's the thing, isn't it? You know, as we, as we alluded to in uh, during the race commentary there, uh, we, when we came to Suzuka for round two, um, he stuck it on pole and then picked up a puncture and ended up finishing right at the back. He had to right a wrong today, didn't he? And, and he did that. And he did it under pressure from Rio Hirakawa. And he did it under pressure from Tomoki Najiri as well. Yeah, so he did you know, the way and he's done it the right way. He's got the uh, the champion behind him. And, and Hirakawa, who's arguably one of the fastest drivers in the field. So today was a genuine out-and-out -out win. Yeah, it was a spectacular drive from Nirai Fukutsumi. And uh, I can tell you, we can just have a look at the confirmed results from today. There is confirmation Fukuzumi is your race winner. 1.3 seconds clear of Rio Hidekawa in second. Tomoki Najiri finishes his year. He's your 2021 champion in third on the podium ahead of Yui Sekiguchi. Then comes Hiroki Otsu ahead of Kenta Yamashita, who's had a tough year in the Kondo racing car. Sasha Fenestra has qualified eighth, finished seventh. A good day's work from him, considering he's been out of the seat for the majority of the year. Giuliano Alesi started this race 13th, eventually finishing 8th ahead of Naoki Yamamoto and Toshiki Oyu in 11th. Then comes Nobuharu Matsushita. We'll talk about him a little bit later on. He uh, was on pole and had a bit of a disaster this afternoon. Sena Sakaguchi, 13th ahead of Ritomo Miyata, who had that spin. Yuji Kunimoto in 15th from Shotsuboy. Kazuya Oshima, Kazuto Kotaka and Tatiana Calderon in 19th place. So that's how things finished today. And there's your important one. Tomoki Nojiri is your 2021 champion from Nirai Fukutsumi, who just finishes second. And that comes down to drop scores and, uh, and best results of the season. So Nirai Fukutsumi in second, ahead of Yui Sekaguchi, Ryo Hirakawa in fourth, from Toshiki Oyu in fifth. And we, in the break, myself and Play were frantically trying to do maths. And uh, we, did come, we did figure out they were both on 55, but it does come down to, to best results from throughout the season and Nirai Fukutsumi. Uh, is confirmed in second place. And there is your team standings. Team Impul confirmed as your champions this year. Two points clear of Docomo, Team Dandelion racing. A good good afternoon for Impul and uh, Docomo. Team Mugen, 77 points in third. Nakajima in fourth with 47. And the Inging team in fifth with 37 and a half. Nice to see Impul back at the top of the team standings. That hasn't happened for 11 years. So, lots to sum up from this afternoon's action, and one of those was, of course, the Rookie of the Year, and there it is, confirmed. Hiroki Otsu is your 2021 Super Formula Rookie of the Year. Three points clear of Seno Sakaguchi, Ritomo Miyata in third, but Hiroki Otsu is the man uh, who got the job done here at Suzuka to confirm himself as Rookie of the Year and what a year it has been for him. Um, Plowy, uh, if you could just sum up what he had to do today because there was a lot of pressure on his shoulders and he was so keen to, to get the job done, particularly having had such a fantastic uh, uh, time out at Twin Rimotegi a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, of course, you know, but having having such a strong teammate in, in a jury, I mean, he's got the perfect opportunity. Uh, you know, your first season in, in a in a championship, you know, you, you've got the best who's out there. You've got a, a fantastic team around you, one of the best cars. That Team Mugen car is, is is absolutely hooked up. They've won four out of seven races this season with you know, the jury taking three wins. And then he's, he's fantastic debut win at Motegi. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a dream scenario. You know, you, when you come in, you, you want to be learning. You, you He's got the perfect benchmark to learn from from the jury. Well, that sums up your year. Hiroki Otsu is your is your rookie of the year. Listen, let's let's talk a bit more in depth about 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 the race that we've seen this afternoon. Well, let's go right back to the start, shall we? Um, 
And it was a frantic start, wasn't it? Hopefully we can see some pictures of that at a replay because Nobuharu Matsushita obviously picked up that, that uh, uh, stop-go penalty or the drive-through penalty as a result of a minor creep. I want to take a look at this again because... It's, it was before the lights went out. So he's, he's dropped it into gear. It's crept forward. And before the last light went out, he'd already made the move forward. And, uh, and that's why he picked up that penalty. But look at Tomoki Dajiri scampering from fifth right up to third. And it was a fantastic start from, from him. And... Um, immediately put um, Toshiki Oyu un under pressure um, and uh, it was a good start for him but look, Nobuharu Matsushita punished unfairly do you think I mean at the end of the day yes the, so we could just see it there the car he hadn't moved before the lights went out but during the lights going out process when he'd gone to put it into first the car's just jumped forward he's then stopped the final lights gone out and then he's gone and then the lights have gone green and he's but he's he's made technically a small jump forward, and that's enough for them, to the stewards, to, to deem it a, you know a stop go. It's, it's harsh. It's, it's like, harsh. It's like VAR in football. We're talking of like millimeters here, and, and honestly, in the scheme of you know advantage, is it really gaining an advantage? You know, if you pull away and you get a jump start, yes, maybe. But the fact that he's crept even like a few centimeters and then stopped, has it gained him an advantage? No. But it's just ruined his entire day. That's destroyed his day, and it could have been an absolute dream for, for B-Max, couldn't it? We, we ended up getting a spectacular race anyway, but listen, at the end of the day, racing's racing, and if they say you're not allowed to move, once once you've stopped, you're not allowed to move, then that's the way it is. And the thing is with Suzuka, which you might not get at, at places like uh, Sugo or, or possibly Motegi, you do have sensors in the ground. It's an international circuit. You know, Formula One goes to Suzuka. Um, so you do have those sensors that 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 measure any movement at all and uh, and if and if it pings it pings but if you know if i might add though Chen, i just would like to see a little bit of common sense you know just just through a bit of discretion you know things don't have to be, always be black and white you know clearly it's not getting given advantage you know if he had jumped to start clearly then yes or it had got a rolling you know launch then maybe but the fact that he barely moved and stopped you know looking at the camera you can barely see him move yeah. No, I totally agree with you. At the end of the day, he didn't jump start before the light had gone out. He'd put it into first, it clunked forward, he stopped, then the lights went out and he got going. So I do agree with you. And, and, and I, I, don't think he was, I don't think he was even past the, the, the check, you know, the, uh, the box where you went to park in. So the fact that he's not even gone past the, the box. Yeah, it's um, it was harsh. Well, this is this is earlier in the race, and this was one of the moments of the race. This is Tomoki Najiri just sticking it down the inside of Toshiki Oyu. But look at Oyu; he hangs it out around the outside. Says, "I'm not going anywhere, and you're not having this off me, pal." Leaves it up the inside, going into the S curves. Najiri chooses to stay there, and um, eventually someone's going to run out of space. And unfortunately, it was uh, Toshiki Oyu who ended up in in the gravel. As a result of that, Tomoki Najiri ended up getting a um, a five second penalty, which which didn't make a difference to the to the result in the race. He, he was, you know, further down, too far down the road for Yui Sekiguchi to catch him anyway. But listen, what's your thoughts on that? For me, that's a harsh penalty because Toshiki Oyu had made the decision to stay there, to stay on the outside. He knew what was coming. It's not like Tomoki Najiri deliberately put him into the gravel. Um, you, the speed is building all the way through those S curves as well. Now, for me personally, I think honestly, speaking frankly, the, the stewards have had an absolute shocker today. The fact that that was just pure hard racing, side by side, very, very fair, very harsh. Um, but yeah, any time a driver, you stick it around the outside, you can almost expect to, to get contact because you're on the inside, you know, you, you have the right of way. And, and the, the fact that it's a tighter line, you will tend to understeer out slightly. I mean, look at, look at Hamilton and Verstappen, you know, the fact that Hamilton didn't get penalized for sticking Verstappen in the barrier. And that was arguably a lot, a lot worse. So, uh, I totally agree with you. It's, it was, it was, it was fairly harsh. Again, it didn't have an outcome on the result of the race, but it could have done. And, uh, you know, had Tomoki Najiri deliberately turned into Toshiki Oyu and put him in the gravel, that's a different kettle of fish. The fact is, Oyu knew that he was on the outside and, and, and had chosen, had, had committed to stay there. For me, 
uh, I think that was a fairly harsh penalty. Look, let's talk about Nirai Fukusumi, shall we? Um, he had, he's had a fantastic afternoon. It's been a brilliant afternoon for him, and um, I, I think it was it was a fairly brave decision. Well, we've got him coming into the pits here. I was, I was going to say it was a fairly brave decision to bring him into the pits when they did, and we were questioning this strategy, weren't we, during the race? But it, but it did work out for him. Yeah, I think uh, this is one call where, where we probably got, got wrong, where we thought that he would have been better to stay out, but the undercut certainly worked for him. You know, he did suffer for the first few laps and cold tyres, but then he was really able to to, to get the tyres working and put in some blisteringly fast laps. Yeah, it, it certainly worked for him, and um, but that was, you know, that's the confidence that he had in the car that he was able to uh, to, go, to go out and, and start banging in hot times. Tomoki Najiri, um, he also, Tomoki Najiri was pitting shortly afterwards, and that again was something that perhaps that we questioned because Najiri was putting in was was putting in hot times, and, and uh, at the t at the time the race was on, we were looking at what was going on between um, Fukutumi and and Tomoki Najiri, and when he made that pit stop, we were questioning that. Yeah, absolutely. I think, but I think uh, it shows you the confidence that Fukuzumi's got in the car that that he can pass people on circuit. You know, he knew that he had a, a strong car underneath him today. Yeah, you can just see uh, that was uh, Tomoki Najiri just just coming out of the pits, and uh, there is uh, Nirai Fukuzumi just hunting him down. And it didn't take Fukuzumi very long to get past him. And uh, that was just that little uh, tank slapper he got, and then he comes tearing past to mock in Najiri. And Najiri was really punished on cold tyres, wasn't he? We saw Yui Sekiguchi here. Just look for that. There's the movement. And um, yeah, Najiri was, um, he was. Um, he was he was part, he was struggling on those cold tires. Certainly, when you compare him to Yui Sekaguchi, who made those cold tires work for him from very early on, and he had to. But you know what, cold tires or not, that was still a very brave move by Fukuzumi to stick it around the outside there. He knew that he had to get the job done. You know, because it takes about a lap or a lap or a lap and a half for for the for the car to start generating heat in the tires. So he knew that that was his one moment. He, had he waited or hesitated, that would have been it. Quick word for, about Ria Hirakawa because look, he's had a good afternoon, hasn't he? Uh, he started ninth. Finished, finished second, so he's jumped up seven places, and, and a lot of that was as a result of strategy. And we did say that strategy was going to play a big part in this race. So this is where you can see Ria Hirakawa just leaving, leaving the pits, and there's Nirai Fukutsumi, who we knew was going to get past him because uh, Hirakawa was was on cold tyres. But but um, Hirakawa's race pace today was very strong. Yeah, I mean he's he's had a great end to the season, and you know this is a guy who has had a very disappointing year by by his high standards just hasn't quite clicked for him this year. He's been outshone by Segaguchi and, and he really needed to to finish the season on a high. You know, last year he was one of the contenders for the championship and then this year it's just not quite gelled for him. Yeah, it has been a shame for, for Ryo Hirakawa, hasn't he? He's done a, uh, you know, certainly when you look at the performance that he had in 2020 fighting for the championship, uh, it just it just hasn't come together. What do you think has gone on there? Well, I think one one factor is the, 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 the Toyota engine that they've got is, is not as strong as the Honda, so they've They've had like their uh, their arms, you know, the legs tied a little bit at times, but also he's had a lot of bad luck as well. Been been taken out, but you know, in races, making wrong calls, wrong strategy decisions, going to slicks when it's when, when it's been wet, and you know, vice versa, and. Uh, just as things have not gone his way this year, you know, he's always shown that he's he's one of the quickest drivers in the field, but it's just things have not worked out for him. Do you think it's luck, or do you think that the team Impul guys have just lost have just lost a little bit of pace where everyone else has has. Uh, has got has come forward as we look at our, the live pictures coming in from from Japan. As, uh, Nirai Fukusumi goes to take the, the top step of the podium. And uh, yeah, just getting back to Rio Hirakawa. There we go. You can see. No, that's third Rio. Oh, other place. side, mate. <laughs> other side. Um, but yeah, do you think that the team Impul guys have just lost a little bit of pace relative to everybody else? Yeah, I mean, I think the people have moved on. You know, the uh, of course Mugen this year they they've they've come out and uh, they've found something. You know, they they whether or not they've developed the dampers on the car or, or the strategy with the setup. But uh, you know, I think everyone else has taken you know a big step forward and, and Impulse seem to have stayed still. But of course they are hindered by the Toyota engine, so that that's the factor.
ご協力ありがとうございましたそして福水選手優勝おめでとうございますそれでは初めに優勝選手にはジャック鈴鹿グランプリタイトルトロフィーが贈られます Japanese national anthem for、uh, Nirai Fukutsumi, our winning driver here in Suzuka. Well, it's the, that marks the final podium ceremony of 2021.、Um, those Honda units have been singing all year, haven't they? And as Plowy said, perhaps those drivers who are running the Toyota power units had a, had a little bit of a disadvantage.、Um, But、um, Honda closing out the drivers' championship in that Mugen car, but it is Toyota with Team Impul who close out the team's championship. And already, I think Plowy, everybody will be looking towards、uh, towards 2022 and and what they can do to to those guys who've, who've who've had a difficult year, what they can do to turn their year around and and, and get back on the pace. You see there, Chenny, the iconic trophy with the deer and the bell. You know, did you know that Suzuka literally means deer and bell? I didn't know that, Plowy. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, I've got I forget the story, but it goes back to to the old times where some some guy was escaping the the people trying to kill him or whatever, and basically he was on, was on a deer and used the a、uh, uh, deer with a bell to ward off、um, wolves, apparently, or something like that. Anyway, go, go on Wikipedia to check it out because I've forgotten the story.、I'm, There you go. I'm making this up, but anyway, Suzuki literally means deer and bell. Every day, every day is a, every day is a school day.、Um, uh, And, uh, you got one of them trophies. You got many trophies, Plowy. Many, many trophies in your glittering career in, in motorsport. And、uh, Tomoki Najiri just taking applause for finishing、uh, third today. Maria Hirakawa confirmed in second. Nirai Fukusumi confirmed as your.、Uh, As your race winner, and、uh, it was、um, a typical Super Formula race here in Japan. Frantic from the word go, and that's exactly what we want to see. So, pictures coming in from the、uh, the live podium ceremony over in Japan, and.、Um, We've got a few to get through. They love a podium ceremony. They love a podium ceremony <laughs> in Japan. And to be fair, rightly so. Well, look, we've got today's race to wrap up. We've got a, a drivers' championship, a drivers' champion to celebrate, and and rookie of the year. I want to come back to that, uh, uh, Plowy.、Um, Hiroki Otsu has done a spectacular job, and I think more than anything, yes, his performance this year has been great. But it, but his.、Um, His, his, and you can see him crossing the line there. His future is very, very bright. Absolutely, there. I mean,、uh, you know, coming in in the first season, it's, it can be very intimidating. You know, you've got a, a teammate such as Najiri, but he's,、uh, you know, he's, he's really shown his talent. And, and you know, that, that breakthrough win a few weeks ago just proves that he belongs in the, in the championship. And, and, and listen, obviously, I think, I'm sure we're going to see Hiroki Otsu in a seat of a Super Formula, Formula car next year. But beyond that, you know, you, you start to look at your options in Super GT, GT500,、uh, and do you make like Alex Palau did? Do you then consider going over to America? Do you start tapping up Formula One teams? Because I'm sure they're all going to be. I mean, this is a premier single seater series. This is up there with Formula One. It's up there with it, with IndyCar. It's ahead、uh, of the kind of the, the, the junior categories that lead that lead you into Formula One, isn't it? And I'm sure. Those Formula One teams will be looking at him, going, "It's a potential star of the future." Absolutely, and look at guys like、uh, Sonoda in Formula One right now. I mean, the, the, you know, he's obviously raced against the Miatas and the Otsus, and you know, I think having Sonoda in Formula One will be an inspiration to Miata and, and Otsu just to, just to show that look, you can you can do this. Um, and, and they'll be thinking, well, you know, if he can have, a, have an opportunity, why can't I? So、uh, you know, they'll be knocking on the door to Honda to see if they can get away into Formula One. Well, it's been a fantastic year for、uh, Hiroki Otsu, and I believe we can now cross over to Japan and、uh, and see him on the podium. So there he is, Hiroki Otsu,、uh, confirmed as your Rookie of the Year.、Um, It has been a spectacular year for him. Fuji round one qualified eighth, finished sixteenth. Suzuka. 
ninth and uh, round two and finished the race in fifth. Autopolis, it was a bit of a lull in qualifying 11th, but managed to pull it back to sixth. And Sugo for round four, he qualified eighth, finished in 10th. Mategi, the first time we went to Mategi this year, qualified seventh and finished tenth, but his whole season turned around just a few weeks ago when uh, at, Mate at Mategi, the second time we went there, stuck it on pole with an inspired tyre choice. Everyone else went for wets. He decided it was time for slicks and it worked out for him. He stuck it on pole and converted that pole into, uh, into victory and today qualified fifth and uh, and finished fifth and it was a a great drive from him uh, and that was enough for him to be confirmed as uh, rookie of the year 38.5 points collected uh, ahead of Sena Sakaguchi who, who uh, three points less <laughs> looks like they're setting up for an interview are we going to hear from Hiroki Otsu hopefully we can do and um Raise the microphone up there. <laughs> First, thank you for your support for the whole year. I'm really happy to become Rookie of the Year. It was a long way. I was not stepping up like the usual drivers would do, it was not always a straight way, but to get a win in this top formula category has really done a lot for my confidence levels and to have good results over the whole year is really a good thing and I'm really grateful for the whole team. I want to develop more and get more and more wins and we'll do everything for that. So thanks for your support. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Rookie of the Year, Hiroki Otsu. Yeah, I think it's a bright future indeed for Hiroki Otsu, and um, you know, as I said, he has taken his uh, he has taken the Rookie of the Year uh, title, but but beyond that, it's been a it's been a, a, a fantastic year for Mugen in general, hasn't it? Tomoki Najiri wrapping up the championship, and then the sister team, although they're both running out of the same garages, um, Hiroki Otsu taking Rookie of the Year. Yeah, I think I think next year is going to be difficult for him. Though he will need to step up. You know, he will need to to start making his own decisions on setups. Right now, he's coming in with a you know as a rookie, just getting in the car and driving, and and he's free just to drive. Whereas Najiri has got that technical experience to, to pull himself out of the bag and. Uh, you know, when, when the car's perfect, it's anyone can jump in and drive it. But when you have an off weekend and you've got to lead the team and make the right set of decisions, I think this is where Atsu really will have to step up and start developing as a driver. That's the thing. When you have a good year in motorsport, as Hiroki Atsu has, has done, and you know, teams next year will be expecting not just results from him, but also more than that, when you're out of the seat, you'll be expecting people, him to come back and give data and lead the team. And do, the pressure does start to build considerably more. Absolutely. You know, you know, he's, he's had an incredible opportunity this year, you know, coming into a team, Team Ugen, which has you know, easily got the fastest car of the year, of the year. And then your teammate is Najuri. Um, you know, it's the perfect scenario. So going forward, you know, will Najuri be as fast as he is this year? You know, will the Mugen car be as quick? And if it isn't, then he will be expected to, to help contribute to, to that, that technical, um, you know, that, that development. Well, that's interesting as well because you see you see that so often, don't you? As we rejoin our live pictures down in Japan, and you know we're speaking of the teams. Uh, there is Team Impul coming out to uh, celebrate the 2021 uh, Constructors Teams Championship, and uh, it was thanks really to a strong drive from Ria Hirakawa and Yui Sekiguchi. Remember, Tomoki Najiri is, you've got in the Mugen cars, Hiroki Otsu and Tomoki Najiri are running as two separate teams. Had they not been, and had they been just under the Team Mugen banner only, 
they would have walked away with the championship this year. Instead, uh, it's Team Impel who, uh, who are up there, and rightly so. You know, um, haven't been there since 2010, and it's great to see them up there. There's confirmation of that. 88 points for Team Impel, 86 for Docomo Team Dandelion. That Team Mugen is just... Tomoki Nojiri's contribution. That does not include the points from Hiroki Otsu. That's a heavy trophy, fellas. Don't drop that one. Uh, Nakajima in fourth uh, with 47 and Inging in fifth. But um, yeah, Team Mugen is just Hiroki Otsu's contribution. So had it been, uh, sorry, um, yeah, Tomoki Nojiri's, had it been Hiroki Otsu added on as well and they'd been all running on the same banner, then it would have been, um, they'd have done the double this year. Yeah, it's a bit, a bit amusing that they, they, they don't do that, but of course there's politics involved. It's, it, they are two separate entities They're running under the same team, of course, but you know they are two separate teams just running under the same garages. Scoring separately, and uh, yeah, it has been a, a fantastic year for Team Impul. They'll be looking, though, next year to not just wrap up the team's championship, but wrap up the, uh, the driver's championship as well. <laughs> Thank you very much. It was a difficult year. But to become team champion, we really owe it to all the drivers and all the team staff. Me, myself, I'm not doing anything, you know. And to be honored like this, to be supported and applauded like this, I'm really happy that I've done racing and next year will be even better. And please all come to Formula Nippon again. Thank you. Sorry, let me correct you. It's super formula. It's super formula. I'm sorry. Thanks for your speech, Mr. Hoshino. Congratulations. It's all the same. I mean, Super Formula was known previously as Formula Nippon, and it was it was there was there was F Formula Nippon. There was Japanese Formula 3000, and then it got renamed as Super Formula. But it's all the same. It's, it's all the same. It's just Mr. Hoshino just showing his age a little <laughs> bit there. But that's that's all right. Listen, that's that's your your. What have we done? We've got drivers out of the way. The, the winners of the race. We've got Rookie of the Year. Now we've got the teams out of the way. We've got to talk about Tomoki Nojiri, our, our, our champion. And um, you know, it hasn't been done. Loic Duval, I think 2009 or 2010 was the last driver to get the championship wrapped up before the final round. That's how close Super Formula racing is and uh, Tomoki Nojiri has got that job done this year he has been dominant he has done a spectacular job hasn't he absolutely I mean his worst finish I think was, was sixth place this year not a bad stat not a, not a bad stat is it take that yeah um, listen, it has been it has been a superb year for Tomoki Nojiri. As you said, his his worst result of the year has been sixth, and it's been consistency that's brought him this year's Super Formula Championship. So let's take a look back now at some of the best moments from his year.
Brilliant pictures coming in there. And, uh, and listen, what a year it's been for, for Tomoki Najiri. Absolutely deserves to take this year, year's title and, and to do it in the, under the conditions that he did. When other people, to be fair, were making mistakes around him, it was consistency. We've said it before. Consistency that has what has brought him has brought, brought him this championship. Yeah, it's, uh, it's great to see you see in the, in the video there just, just what it means to him and, and to the team. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, it's finally getting that, that proverbial monkey off his back. You know, he's been there or thereabouts for the last seven or eight years. And something has just gelled this season. You know, he's, he's a very much a late bloomer. And, and to finally get that championship, you know, he, he said in an interview coming into the season that not having any championship credentials before this year, he, he felt like a bit of a, an inferiority complex. So uh, this will feel like he's ticked a big box in his career. He certainly will not have that this year. And uh, this is something we didn't do when he did wrap up the championship was his championship podium ceremony. Yui Sekiguchi in third, Nirai Fukutsumi to second today, but it's that man, Tomoki Najiri. Uh, I'm sure it will have sunk in already um, after getting it done a few weeks ago at Mategi. He is your 2021 Super Formula champion, and um, look at the dominance, Plowy. 86 points compared to Fukusumi and Sekaguchi's 55. It has been a spectacular year for Tomoki Najiri. おめでとうございます。今一度の自力選手に大きな拍手をどうぞお願いいたします。ご協力感謝申し上げます。皆様ありがとうございます。それではこれより各選手にはカブシキ会社日本レースプロモーションよりクリスタルのトロフィーが
a great year it's been for him as well. I don't think I've ever seen one that big before. <laughs> it's, uh, it's certainly a, a big trophy, isn't it? <laughs> you go, go on, over your head, go on, up you get. Don't drop it. He's just driven and driven for an hour and a there half. You go. And, uh, there you go. He needs a bit of help to get it up. There that's we go. a um, that sort of Senna-esque, wasn't it? And that was at Suzuka as well when he had to lift the trophy and just didn't have anything left in his arms to get the trophy above his head. That's a brave man. I wouldn't be doing that. But um, yeah, there's a lot of weight in those trophies and um, there's a lot of history and heritage in them as well. They're not to be dropped and not to be damaged. I think you can maybe just grab that one by the side, Tamaki, and just give it a little lift. There you go. Well done. Look at the size of that. <laughs> that's almost taller than me, that is. That's the, that's definitely taller than you, Plowy. <laughs> that is the biggest trophy I think I've ever seen. And um, fantastic to see Tamaki Najiri loving it, lapping up every moment, because it really is well-deserved. And uh, there'll be a big, big party in Suzuka tonight for that man and for the entirety of the Team Mugen team. So hopefully we can uh, we can hear from Tomoki Najiri. So Toshi, our translator, will be getting ready. A message for the fans, please. First, thank you so much for your support, for all the people involved. I'm really so grateful. I couldn't have come here with only my powers. Your support from every single fan, from everyone who came to support us at the tracks, I'm really speechless. Thank you so much for your support. To see a beautiful scenery like this is something I haven't imagined in my wildest dreams. It's, it, is, it is really a dream. And I will bring out my best to experience something like this again. Thank you again for your support. Thank you very much. We are seeing a great champion, Tomoki Nojiri. Your message to your team? Yeah, I gave you a lot of work to do. But you always fixed the car before the races, during the races. And I gave you a lot of difficult tasks, but you all cleared it. You all did your best, and I want to give my best in the future again. I am looking forward to battle with you in the future, too. Thank you so much. So there you go, some uh, extremely graceful and emotional words from Tomoki Najiri, a worthy champion. Play. I'm not going to lie to you, I'm a little, a little lump in my throat in there. It, was, it clearly means an awful lot to him. And, um, he clearly got very choked up there, didn't he? Yeah, he did. And, and, it's, and it's, you know, to win, to win this series and, to, and to, to take that kind of applause in front of your home crowd like that it is, it is a once in a lifetime thing. Um, the question is now, as we said, what can he do next year? What can Mugen do next year? Can they can they repeat that? Because, we, as I said, we see it so often, time and time again in, in Super Formula. It just changes year on year on year on year. And he will be desperate, desperate to, re to repeat what he's done in, in 2021. Yeah, absolutely. You know, he's got that taste of victory now. He, you know, he'll have that such a weight lifted because, you know, for so long that... 
you know, he will have felt that, you know, you know, he would not been able to get a championship. And now that he's, he's done it, you know, he'll be so free, you know, driving freer and maybe he, you know, will even take it to a new level. So time will tell. We've got to talk about next year and we don't know yet who's going to be where and who's going to be going to be doing what as as a result, not just of teams getting themselves together, but as the uncertainty continues uh, with, with travelling uh, around the world. You know, is Rio Hidakawa going to stay in Super Formula? Is he going to focus on, 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 on world endurance racing? You know, we know he's got an opportunity potentially with, with Toyota, but... I think you've got so many young drivers and experienced drivers going into 2022 that the, the, the future of Super Formula is incredibly bright. I mean, you look at just what's happened this weekend with Nobuharu Matsushita in that in that B-Max car. You know, there's so much talent, uh, at raw talent in, in, in this in this race series. Absolutely, and that's another issue that the jury will have is that there's always a new batch of young generation drivers coming through. I mean, there are so many talented drivers in Japan right now. It's, it's like a breeding ground of... of uh, superstars you got you know with team Miata and uh, Otsu and and Sagaguchi you know just just name a few but you know the next season you know where is the next uh, Miata coming from you know for me I just think that this uh, is such a, a great time to be uh, a, you know Japanese driver in Japan right now it has been an absolute pleasure to bring Super Formula to your screens in 2021. Very quickly, because we are running out of time. Massive thanks to the entire Red Bull crew. Listen, we've got racing in Japan. They're producing it from Austria. We're sat in the UK, would you believe? So it's three countries working together to bring you these live pictures. Also, unsung hero, Toshi. I'm, I know you'll be embarrassed, but that man there <laughs> does all the translations for us, because Plowy and myself, um, Japanese isn't up to scratch. And to you guys at home for watching the shows it has been a pleasure to bring you super formula plowy thank you to you as no, well you. i'd love to say thanks more but we are running out of time guys we hope you've enjoyed 2021 super formula for the final time we'll leave you some fantastic fantastic images from this year goodbye in 2021 Tomoki Nojiri wins round one of the Super Formula Championship here in Japan and what a drive it was. And over the line he goes, he wins his second race of the season. Tomoki Nojiri has done it again. Regardless of the conditions that we've done it on, Giuliano Lacey has taken his first ever Super Formula victory. Lights out here and we're off and running for round four of Super Formula from Sugo. And Nirai Bukazumi has done it. His first ever win in Super Formula. Tomoki Najiri, you are the winner at Motegi. What a drive from the Team Mugen man. Here comes Hiroki Otsu, gets it over on the wall. What a race it's been. And that man, Tomoki Najiri, is your Super Formula Champion 2021.